It looks good. It looks good. But I still have to thank thank her for for cutting my hair because it's like too long. It's unbearable already. And then also got you looking uh, sexy. <laughs> Mom, you know. come come here, Sammy. Sammy too. <laughs> you, you're almost like a twin. <laughs> a Selena come for him. You cut ah. it. It looks very good. Very, very good. Good morning, Mother Annie. How are you? I think she has audio. Not sure. She molded herself. Yes. So we have. Uh, we'll give some people more time to come on. Mm -hmm. How's everyone doing? Okay. okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Very happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we we have a celebration. Yes. <laughs> a celebration. Independence uh, Day. Independence Day. Oh, is, is it your you you all Independence Day today? No. Uh, Canada is the 1st of July, so we are like uh, three days earlier than the U.S. Oh, okay, so we're behind. Then. Close to, close. Okay, our yeah. day yesterday. So, our, we celebrated independence by doing, by cooking. Mm. We just cooked, so that was a, a family, family, family time. Okay. Did you make barbecue? My kids, yeah. Ah. I eat uh, shrimp and salmon and crawfish. Mm. Okay. Lisa, you were celebrating Independence Day. Yeah, I was telling Pastor about it. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. You're in I your think, new house. I think we are all celebrating at the div. Uh, Separating di for different things <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, without further ado, let us get started. They can catch up. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. All righty. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you. We adore you. We thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed us just to come together, just to be once again with you, Father. We thank you for this day that you've blessed us to be in, to use us for signs, wonders, and miracles. Thanking you for you doing the work. We thank you as we open up our hearts and minds, receive this word by love and by faith, apply into our lives, and take into a world that is good, holy, and beautiful, for that is the essence of our being. That is the essence of how you create. We thank you, Lord, for blessing all the churches in the world. We all teach and preach the same thing, to be in one accord, there be no division amongst us. We ask for peace amongst the world. We ask for those who have lost loved ones that you comfort and touch their heart. Continue to soothe them as they go through this transition. Continue to bless over those that are traveling and traveling grace to and from their destinations. We thank you for your hedge of protection around us. We thank you for health and healing our body, prosperity and abundance. We give you the honor, the glory and the praise. This is our prayer that we offer up to you in Jesus' name. And we all say amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining Yay! Good morning, Sister Teresa. Good morning, bro. Good morning, Brother Anson. Yay! Good to see you all this morning. Any questions, comments, concerns? Anything at all? Any testimonies? Any praise reports? Anything? Any, by the way? <laughs> Good? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All righty. So no good. Yes. Okay. All is good. All is good. All is good. Everybody still. Everybody's awake. Yay. <laughs> okay. We are on page five thirteen, and we'll start this off with the only question, and we left it up in general because in this is going to cover a lot of things that we've covered before um dealing with from love to fear to how to tap into when we say unconditional love loving others we'll get more in depth of that of how, what that really means and how to do it because some don't know how to do it and as we begin to 
teach others how to, now we learn it ourselves. So question number one, are you willing to make the journey from fear to love as you look upon anything as you experience any emotion? Are you willing to make the journey from fear to love as you look upon anything as you experience any emotion? Does anybody understand what that means? So, so um, to make the journey from fear to love means you have to do quite a lot of things. You have to change your perceptions. You have to change your behavior. You have to change um, the way you think. Mm -hmm. um, many, many things that um, are your habit also maybe. Yes. Right. And um, so some people, they might not want to change because they feel secure. They feel uh, you know, uh, safety in, 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 uh, in, in not changing anything kind of things. So mm -hmm. I, think, I think the question becomes that, are we willing to do it? Well, in my opinion, the only way for us to, to progress in life is actually we have to do it. It's not about, you know, mm -hmm. are you willing to do it? Do you want to do it when you want to do it? I think it should be that we really, really have to do it. Right. Absolutely. And remember, God didn't give you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So in essence, you only have two emotions, which one is of love and one is of fear. Now, every other emotion fall under these two umbrellas. Does that make sense? Good morning, Sister Sonia. Good morning. Hi. Happy anniversary. Hi, oh. fellow millionaires. Oh, thank you. Today is me and my wife's ninth year of anniversary. Oh, happy oh. anniversary. Ele 11 years together, nine years of her dealing with me and my craziness. <laughs> <laughs> She's a strong woman. Y'all pray for her. <laughs> Good morning, Sister Rochelle. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> Good morning, Sister Williams. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Any praise reports, any testimonies before we go on? We're, we're just been getting in question one. But you know, I always love praise reports and testimonies. Any by the ways? I got a, I got a praise report. All right, let me hear it. I got 7,000 of my 10,000, and it ain't the seventh yet. Ooh, wow. <laughs> That's great. Wait, you only needed five, didn't you? Well, I, did. I thought I did until I called around and, you know, every time you cross the state line, they, they charge you another sixteen or $1,700. Uh, yeah, okay. because I have like six storages and okay. two here in Florida, two in Georgia, then California. So they charge you like each state. Gotcha. Gotcha. Then I have to ship my car, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. So, yeah. Well, praise God. So you, oh, the, the three thousand is already there. Say so how it say it's on the way. It's there. I can say it's on the way. It's there. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. I like that even better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Father, for blessing Sister Sonia with the seven out of the three, and we thank you for the rest that she has right now, and we give you the glory. Amen. 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 Well, look how good you are, Creedence. See. I yeah. know. That God is so good. I told you what He told me. Follow yeah. what. Tell you to follow, leave when I tell you to leave. That's right. <laughs> but also, in saying that, that also puts you in now faith is the substance. Your substance last week was, I need $5,000 to make this transition. Mm -hmm. From last week to now, how long did it take? Um, four days. Four days, hallelujah. Hey, but I'll tell you this, even one even better. Sunday when we hung up, when after this was over, uh -huh. my cousin and I, we had like a little prayer session because after I talked about how we all used to pray together. So we prayed together afterwards, right? And um, remember I had said to you guys, I'm praying that the people that deliver my stuff would also be reliable and trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Before that day was over, why did I get one of the most trustworthy people I know call and say, 
I'll move your stuff for you. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Wow. Look at that. Boy. You just gave me a feel on that one. See, that's what God. All the promise of him is what? Well. Uh, Amen. 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 Not only that, you call those things that be not as though they were. Who is this? Amen to that. So yes. now, when we say be a deliberate creator, this is what this means. When we say follow the five steps of prayer that they teach over in Mark, this is the five <laughs> steps of yeah. prayer. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Five job. Step three, believe. Step four, receive. No. Now five, you enjoy, and then you start over again. Yeah, um, you know, when step one, when you know, when I ask, I'm already at step two and step one because I'm always expecting God to do what I'm asking Him to do. So I'm already there at step one. That's right. When that's I'm right. Out, I'm already believing, going to do it. There's no doubt in my mind. So step one, step two is kind of like combined for me because if I say, Lord, I need, thank you. Because he's already given it to me. That's right. It's already done. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing that blessing. Anyone mm -hmm. up there? Anyone? All right. If not, we're on page 513. We just got through looking at question number one. Are you willing to make the journey from fear to love as you look upon anything as you experience any emotion? And we always, we just stated that there were only two emotions, love or fear. For God did not give you fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So every other emotion that you experience either falls under the umbrella of love or it falls under the umbrella of fear. Make sense? Yes. If I'm sad, what does umbrella does that fall under? Fear. Fear. If I'm depressed. Fear. Fear. If I'm lacking. Fear. Yeah. So you understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you consolidate those two emotions, now it's easier to not ignore the emotion because the emotions are there for a reason. They're there for your body, mind, spirit. They're there as a gauge. They're there as a tool. People want to suppress the crying and suppress the anger and suppress these things. These are these are biochemical genes God gave you. To range, I'm angry, so I don't like what angry feels like. So let me get back over and what? Love. Love. Anger falls under what? Anger falls under what? Fear. Fear. So if I'm angry at someone, I'm fearful. Does that make sense? So now yeah. you journey from fear to love. When you start looking at everything, now you experience a different emotion than what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Before, I would get upset at looking at something like that. Now I look at it and I bless it because there's a divine plan that God has. I yeah. might not understand it. I might not need to understand it. I just need to bless it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if, there, and if I'm there to witness it, then I must be part of it. So now I have to learn from it because I created it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now question number two, how do you remember only your loving thoughts? When we first started the teaching, we went under, is this a satisfying thought or not satisfying thought? So in essence, we were teaching you how to have loving thoughts, how to mm -hmm. change the sad thoughts to positive thoughts. That way they don't hold you down. And now all of a sudden you start attracting those type of people, those type of experiences. And now all of a sudden, now everybody's telling a sad stone, a sad story. Now I attract all the sad people. Okay. So how do you remember only your loving thoughts? Because here's why we say that. How many of you have had thoughts that have come up and have kind of messed with you? All of us, every last one of us have had those thoughts that mm -hmm. creep up. Even right now, as we speak, they're creeping up in your mind now as we talk about it. Yeah. Cause you're making us bring them back to remember. Yeah. <laughs> But the reason why is when those thoughts that come out of nowhere and you go, Pastor, I didn't think of that thought. That's not my thought. Or I didn't think of that person or that event or whatever the case was. Mm -hmm. How do you change that? How do you change that to remember your loving thoughts? How do I go from not satisfied back to satisfied? How do I go from fear back to love? 
Because remember, if I don't control my mind, let this mind be in you. If I don't have this type of Christ mind, now I have a mind that's going to create fear. Can't get back to love. It's going to create anxiety. Because remember, each thought has a what? Conjoining thought. Now you have a train of thoughts. Thoughts are energy. Thoughts are what create. That's why it was written, take no thought of what you're wearing, what you're going to eat, what clothes and all these things. For you have no need of these things, right? So now so you begin to practice remembering loving thoughts. I'll tell you this. It always has to start with meditating. Meditate day and night. Reason why the thoughts get away is to keep people can't shift their minds because they haven't meditated. Meditation is a form of discipline. I Where miss what you said because you froze. Meditation is a form of discipline. Mm -hmm. When people are afraid, what do mm -hmm. we tell them to calm them down? Don't be afraid. It's okay. Well, what, else, what else do we tell Breathe. them? We tell yeah. them who said yeah. that. Who I said did. That? Yeah, you tell them to do what? Breathe. Breathe. Now, as I begin to meditate day and night, now I become the breath of life. Mm -hmm. right? Now I become one with the Father. Now I'm calming myself down to get back into let this mind be. Now it's getting me back into loving thoughts. Now I'm looking at the situation is, is it really that serious? Is it really that serious? Yes. It's like what I uh, wrote this morning about, you know, where God is spirit and mm -hmm. where his spirit is, there's freedom. Absolutely. So you Absolutely. have freedom when you're thinking in his loving thoughts. So there's a lot of freedom right there. So you can go from that dissatisfying thought to the satisfying thought because you're free. Your mind is clear. You're open to receive. Absolutely. And we let's be quite honest. It takes work. It does. It works is dead. So oh, yeah. you're gonna it's gonna be a constant challenge. And we don't want to use those words, but it really is because we find ourselves constantly challenged with how to get back to those loving thoughts. How do I how do I love this person who just cut me off on the freeway? How do I love this person who just cursed me, my wife, and my kids out? How do I love this president who divides the country? How do I love, you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. How do I love my exes <laughs> when I carried hurt? Ooh, that's right. Nah. These are things that, that when you meditate day and night, mm -hmm. It brings you back to that place of peace that's peace. all understanding. Yes, but the church, the church tradition will reject it, even though it's written in their Bible. But what they did was they went meditate and they picked up a book and let me study on this and then didn't understand a word that they were studying and got it wrong. <laughs> so it didn't work for them because they went into it with judgment. They went in with condemnation. They went in there with wrong-minded thinking. They didn't yeah. go in there with loving thoughts because God is what? Love. God yeah. is love. So they said, oh, I'm going to meditate on the word and I'm going to meditate on the word day and night. But as soon as somebody do me, oh, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Now they're going to seek their God on them. <laughs> and I say, wait a minute. God reigns on the just as well as the unjust, doesn't he? Yes, he does. If we're to love our enemy, how could I even perceive that thought? So now, when I begin to meditate, it brings me back to a place of peace. How do I have a loving thought when someone has departed the earth? How do I have that loving thought? How do I keep that balance? You got to meditate and pray. <laughs> yeah. And, it's, and it takes a discipline. It really is a discipline. Yeah. But it's one that you have to create a habit. 
And what people don't is create the habit of doing it. When I say meditate, boy, that, it, I'm going to be honest. It becomes a struggle, especially amongst Christians. Oh, they yeah. struggle with that word. Yeah. Because they think it means I have to serve another God or worship or go against what I've been taught and believe something different. When in essence, we're not saying give up anything at all. We're not telling you give up anything. We're just saying, hey, this is what meditation really means. This is what Jesus and all the masters rose up early in the morning when they went up to pray. They were also meditating. They are one and the same. They go together. So when you pray without ceasing, you're technically meditating day and night. Okay. Now, the question is, what are you praying? What are you meditating on? Yes, Lily. Uh, to me, I would think that um, your state of mind mm -hmm. uh, is very important. Is that um, are you doing out of anxiety, uh, fear, like you say? Mm -hmm. um, so all prayers will not be effective. Right. So you need to calm yourself down. Uh, find ways to calm yourself down. Uh, it sometimes I. I find that I cannot sit down and do my meditation. Mm -hmm. Okay? So mm -hmm. the Chinese way of saying that we have nails under our butts so we cannot sit still. <laughs> right. So do something else that you can calm yourself down with, uh, listening to music. Uh, some people will do drawing or mm -hmm. writing. Hour. Um, that kind of thing, you know, just to calm yourself down and, and take your mind off. And it is up to us, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody else can do this for us. Correct. Only we can do it for ourselves. Absolutely. And, and I'm going to add on to what Lily's saying. When you meditate, what you're doing is you're stopping the thoughts of resistant thinking. You're stopping all resistant thoughts. You're stopping anything that's an obstruction to your path to God, your path to the Father. Your path to the Father is first seeking the kingdom of God. Okay? Question number three. <clears throat> How can you extend love by restraining the energy of the body? In other words, when you get upset, how... <laughs> how can you extend love by restraining the energy of the body because anger is an energy. Love is an energy. Fear is an energy. Your emotions, that's why we call it emotions. The scientists call it E equals MC square. <laughs> but it's really energy in motion. Emotion. So if you put out sad emotion, the law of attraction, or as it's written, you reap and you sow out of that emotion is what you're going to get. Okay? So, it goes back to, are you willing to make the journey from fear to love? Because can I love this person when he's treating me wrong? In other words, can I turn the other cheek? If you will. <laughs> he slapped me in this one, I'm going to give him this one. Oh. I still love you. Ooh. <laughs> Because a real master understands there's nothing you can do to me. If you understand God, if God be for you, who in the world could be against you? If God be for you, what in the world could they do to you? What could they do to your spirit? Nothing. The body go, you, I'm going to tell you like this. You beat your body up worse than anybody else could beat you up. <laughs> yes. Based on negative thought causes different emotions in the body, different chemical reactions within the body. And then guess what? Everybody around you feels that energy. Based on you coming in and look you sad. Master, what's wrong? Nothing. And try to squeeze a smile in. And everybody sees right through that. Now they call you proper lion. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not being your authentic self. So this also takes a form of discipline, loving your enemy. How do I extend love by restraining the energy of the body? I meditate. 
before I sometimes Amen. you can, sometimes you got to take that breath. Some people say, "Oh, I'm I got loose lips." Sometimes, past I just if if it comes to my head, it just come out my mouth, and then all the, they're in trouble because of the words they say. But then they try to justify that. But then I go, "You ain't changed. You keep doing it because each time I said it, I ain't got no filter on my mouth." And do you realize that your body? does not know the difference one way or the other. <laughs> it really doesn't. It's going to respond. I yes. was just thinking about that. Can I say something? Yes, ma'am. I was thinking about that this morning, how we were taught, not, not so much in family, but in society, we were taught that if you think it, say it, just get it out. Mm -hmm. I have so learned totally opposite I was just thinking about that this morning. Even if it does not mean, that's not, uh, what do we call it? That's not how we think, how kingdom citizens should think. Right. Just yes. it, say it. In fact, be mindful, don't say it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, sir. That goes back to where our parents taught us, if you can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, but I was thinking, because I had an incident and I had told my cousin about it. Uh, I went to the weight doctor because I want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had went to the weight doctor a uh, week ago. And before I came back from California, I had called this doctor and we were talking on the phone and I didn't like his attitude. And I was thinking, I said, oh man, I hope I get a different doctor when I get there. Mm -hmm. Well, I ended up with the same doctor, right? But he had such a negative attitude. And you know that unsatisfying thought was creeping in while I'm sitting waiting on him to call me back. And then when he comes into the room where I'm at, uh, God forgive me, he's fat. And I'm saying to myself, in my mind, I'm going, he's fat. How is he the weight doctor? You know what I mean? Right. And how can he have such a negative attitude when somebody comes to him for help? Mm -hmm. in the condition. So I had to start pulling them thoughts back. So I'm in there, he's talking to me and I'm meditating. So I don't hear nothing he's saying because <laughs> otherwise it would make me angry, <laughs> you know? So I took <laughs> him out. And then I told, I was telling her like, the minute I start meditating, I automatically go behind the veil mm -hmm. and I can see the angels doing their work for us. Right, absolutely. You know, so yeah. Mm -hmm. All day. That is fact. All right. Question number four. Why can't you know love until you have set all beings free? Because you're not free yourself. Not free yourself. In other words, we're still judging folks. Mm -hmm. Judge not or you'll be judged. And people right. took that picture way left. Okay. Yeah. Number five. Are getting and receiving the same thing? Are getting and receiving is a setup the same thing? <laughs> oh, different. Oh, no, no, different. They're different. Okay, different. They, yes. they can be different, they can be different, but it has to be this two will complete the cycle. Okay. Somebody has to give, then somebody else can receive. But as we give, we also receive at the same time from you know, it's a cycle. Okay, I like that. I like that. That was good. That like was good. It. Yeah. I I say getting and receiving is the same thing only because you have to be in a certain mindset Ooh. when you're receiving it. Mm. So you, if you get something, for instance, like I get a lot of knowledge from you, okay? <laughs> then when, you know, when I'm receiving it, I get that same feeling that I got when you were giving it to me. So I'm receiving it here, you're mm. giving it to me, mm. and then I'm receiving it here. Amen. That's yeah. the blessing. Yes. We're definitely gonna get deeper into that one. And your affirmation, and I always, I always give you this affirmation. We all, this is all, this is my go-to. Well, what, what was the answer? Huh? What was the answer? Are they the same? I'm gonna give it to you later. <laughs> you're getting it later. <laughs> yeah, hey, you're getting it later. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What'd you say, Sister Rochelle? I said they're the same. They're okay. Hey. We're one the same. We got 
Okay, we we go we go find out. <laughs> Get your wheels turning. And like I said, my affirmation is always the go-to of what do I want and why do I want it? The reason why I always go to that one because it helps me with my prayers. It helps me when I'm meditating. It helps me tap in, tune in, turn on to God, Father, Abba. Okay. So the only question then is, are you willing to make the journey from fear to love as you look upon anything as you experience any emotion? For there can be nothing that obstructs from you the light and presence of your creator. To perceive the real world of love is to know with perfect certainty that you and your father are what? One. Yeah. Yeah. You remember only loving thoughts. Love is all that you will what? See. See. To remember your loving thoughts does not mean as you look upon the past, you decide to ignore those thoughts that were less than loving. Everybody get that? Mm -hmm. Okay. It means that in truth, you never do look at the past. And when we say that, when your past comes up, don't judge it. If the ex comes up, don't judge it. If the person who cut you off two weeks ago or said something mean to you two days, don't. Let it go. Let go, let God. Love that phrase. Okay? So rest assured, if you are having a memory now, you are having a very present experience. It is absolutely impossible to think about the past, but thinking occurs when? Now. Now, now faith is. Take no thought. They are connected whether you think they are not, but they are truly connected. Okay? You will look upon the past as you choose to be in the what? Present. Oh, she broke my heart back in 1982. She went out with my best friend. Now I don't like him or her. <laughs> now they married and they're miserable. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> the only thing we can tell them, get over it. You know, and move on. Move on, yeah. Up. As my wife used to tell, well, my wife tells me still, suck it up. <laughs> so if you are still carrying the effects of less than loving reactions and the perceptions you've made from them you will continue to see the past as you always have and this Amen. is why people can't change their mind this is why people can't go from faith to faith and they're stuck in their same ways the only thing different is the environment and the things around them, but their mindset is still stuck back in the day. Mm -hmm. Yet, as you look upon the past, if you will choose to be the presence of love first, wanting only to see with the eyes of Christ, there will not be one event you have ever experienced as a soul that is not immediately translated into perfect harmlessness, into perfect realization that only a dream has occurred. Can someone read that next part? For love looks upon all things and sees that there is no substance to them, except mm. the love out of which those involved in that situation were longing to find a way to know the reality of themselves. Amen. Listen mm. carefully here. There is nothing you can experience that is anything but the soul's longing to be the perfection of what is love. Mm. Everything you, everything, your tall skyscrapers, your busy freeways, your armies is an expression of the longing of the soul, that spark of divinity that rests in all created things to know love. Mm -hmm. yep. Has it become distorted? Oh, yes. To think one can awaken to love, to know love, and to have love by building weapons of destruction must only only be or slowly intake but the longing from which it arises is absolutely no different from past passengers who would place a flower in the barrel of a rifle it is no different than the mother who picks up and struggles her newborn son or daughter the longing is one and the same this is why I've said often to you that what is not love is fear and nothing else. Fear is merely the contraction that has occurred in the soul 
that has lost temporarily the sanity of knowing that it need not seek for love. It need only open and be loved. For the attempt to seek love only reveals that sanity is not ruling domain, ruling the domain and the dominion of your heart and soul and mind. Any attempt to get insane, likewise, any attempt to refrain from receiving all is also insane. Here's your answer. Getting and receiving are not the same. Oh, they're not the same. Giving and receiving are, are not, not the same. same. Giving to get is not true giving. Right. Oh, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Giving and receiving are one. The same. But in either case, the heart must be open, the defense must be laid aside, and the soul becomes wholly vulnerable. The soul becomes vulnerable to who? To God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul. And Lord. I have to be vulnerable to trust that voice. But yet, in the perfect paradox of the spiritual journey, when vulnerability is fully allowed through mastery of the keys to the kingdom, desire, intention, allowance, and surrender, when this indeed is accomplished, Love is known. Everybody get that? Yes. When you understand desire, intention, allowance, and surrender, that's when love is known. Now you're vulnerable. Okay? For in perfect vulnerability, the soul remembers it is perfectly what? Invulnerable. I spelled it wrong, but y'all get it. The world can do nothing to the one who what? only loves the world can do nothing to the one that only what loves if i love my enemy and i love my neighbor what in the world could you do to me right. so now this is why you often hear me say i practice being unoffended the master taught being unoffended if i love you there is nothing you can say or do to offend me because now i am like my father in the image and the likeness because there's nothing you can do to offend God. It even add to God. So it doesn't matter what you do, what you say, God loves you unconditionally, correct? Mm -hmm. So now I become vulnerable. So, oh, indeed, beloved. Doctor, yes. uh, question. Who, who, is the, who becomes vulnerable? We do. We do. We become vulnerable. When you understand the spiritual journey and you uh, when you allow desire, intention, allowance, and surrender to occur, now you know love because that's what God is. Whatsoever I desire, what's my intention? What would I allow God to give? What would I allow God to put into me that's going to bless me? What will I surrender to God for these things to happen? All these things have to work together. But I have to be vulnerable. If I'm not vulnerable, guess what up? I'm, I got a wall up. Yeah. Now it's hard for God to put stuff in because I don't trust that voice. So now I'm not vulnerable. When you're vulnerable, you trust that voice that says, go left, stop. And you don't understand why you need to stop, but because you trust it, guess what you do? You stop. And then all of a sudden, zoom, big truck come right before you. And you go, oh, thank God. Glad I listened to that voice. Oh, my angels protected me. Oh, the God has had a hand on me, all these phrases. But you were vulnerable to trust that voice. Now you recognize how invulnerable you really are if you don't trust that voice. I got a question. So are you not ever allowed to... Um, be upset. I don't say mad because my mother said only dogs get mad. <laughs> go mad, you know, but uh, are you not ever allowed to be upset because you're operating only in love? Is is that true? Sure. You, because again, are you, you saying you, sure that's true or sure you are allowed? What are you sure, saying? You are, sure you are allowed. Okay. Because that is part of God's gift to you as an emotion. Your job is to manage 
your emotion. What we try to do is manage everybody else's emotion. They make me sick. Mm -hmm. They make me mad. Right. Yeah, so, so the part about being allowed to, to be upset and all those things, yes, you are. But like just now we mentioned, just don't dwell in it. Don't okay? Say it. Suck it up and let it go and then uh, go, and, yeah, go and do something else instead. Remember, we practice forgiveness. Go ahead, sis. Go ahead, Lily. Yeah, I, I was thinking that, remember, we have a choice. Mm -hmm. Do you want to suffer or do you want to enjoy yourself? Absolutely. So if you want to enjoy yourself, don't torture yourself <laughs> thinking of those negative things. Right. Absolutely. Because we actually can, you know, switch our mind and focus on something else that is more positive. You can't serve two masters. You either love one or hate the other. It really is that simple. And it's a choice. God gave you free will to choose. So choose love. Because in reality, that's your only choice. So <laughs> Go ahead. I have a question because I was hearing what everybody was saying and how we're practicing being undefendable, undefendable and practicing love. Mm -hmm. you say, sometimes I think I put myself in this situation just to test myself. I'll put myself around those people that test me. Mm -hmm. is, but I don't know if I should do that because then if I don't do <laughs> it, then I feel like I'm avoiding them. <laughs> the fear so that's wow. why i put myself in a position like and then when when the conversation goes the way it should or i didn't have that unsatisfying thought i'd be like okay i did it but then i don't know is, isn't that i don't know i don't know if that's good all the time you said the key word you chose to do it that's a good question though. <laughs> you just answer your own question you chose i to like do her it. question yeah but the reason why I chose to do it because isn't that where we're headed to the uh, a place of mastery in okay. all areas, especially in that area of our lives? Oh, absolutely. It, I'm glad this question came up, and we're gonna I'm gonna answer this question much deeper further in the lesson. Okay. That's a great question because we're gonna I, we're gonna get, go ahead. I have a, a question regarding a little bit back up where you said getting and receiving are not the same. Mm -hmm. I'm just having a little bit of trouble with that. I, I get the part where it says giving to get something. I, I agree with that 100%. But giving and receiving, if giving and receiving are one, I'm looking at them as the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we're telling you don't separate. Okay, so that's why there's no, how can one be right and the other no, be wrong? Right? Watch this. If I give you a million dollars, but then I want a contract or I want something from you, is that true giving? So now, depends I, on. Now I, watch this. Who attracted me? How do we? How do we? You and I come together to even get to that place. You didn't to, get to witness. It. No. So you had to be in that place for mm -hmm. this. Act. So now. Right. Giving and receiving become one. In other words, that experience had to take place. Right. Now, what do I choose to do with it? Because now, do I understand that what you're offering is not good for me? I don't have to take that. Right. But, That's true. But I drew this into my experience, like Sister Williams. I wanted to test myself because this is where we're headed. You don't have to, because guess what? It's going to come to you regardless. Okay, but like you said, if you give me a million dollars and then you want a contract, you could be the bank. Well, here's and, what we're saying. You know. In other words, for this to happen, both hearts have to be open and the right. defense has to be laid aside. So when you are giving and receiving, they become one because they have, they have to be the yin and the yang. They have to work one and the same. That's right. all, all we're saying. But now when you understand that giving and receiving are not the same because giving to get, that's the whole thing with this. I, I get that. Okay, I get that. All right. Okay. So now the giving and the now if I'm giving, like you said mm -hmm. earlier, I give you knowledge. Mm -hmm. I receive knowledge. Mm -hmm. We have to be open on the same page and I have to put my thoughts, judgment, opinions aside, put yours aside. Now our souls become vulnerable. Now we become what? One. Okay. Make sense? I get that. Okay. All right. Okay. 
All right. Uh, oh, indeed, beloved, holy sin the master, the beauty of every flower, the song of every bird that sings, these things are given to you, the holy child of God, the sparkling waters, the vast expanse of the desert, these things are given to you. That's why it was written, let them have what? Dominion over how much of the earth? That's why your job is to bless all of creation. Bless all of creation, the good, the holy, and the beautiful. This is why we overemphasize that, okay? There is no creation that has within it the capacity that you as human beings possess. Not even your whales and dolphins can truly experience and realize the presence and the mystery of the creator. The flow in perfect innocence and creativity in the creator's love, but their capacity to reflect to know and to embody consciously that which love is not the same. And those that would perceive that seeking out a whale or a dolphin or a wolf or a bow or a crow or what have you will add something to their own nature and yet get caught up in projecting onto another form of creation that what must be embraced and of one of itself. For the body is the temple of the living spirit when it is seen through the eyes of the awakened or the eyes that have awakened. Where you are is where heaven is fully available. That's why we always say, now faith is. So now, where are you? Okay? So now, where you are, heaven is fully available. That which, is, that which you are is the love of God made manifest. And when you remember only your loving thoughts, here's your answer. That means that in the very present moment, you are remembering, you are bringing the facets of yourself back into the wholeness of the realization that only love is real. In the Bible, there's a story about a woman who had an issue of blood. And when Jesus healed her, he said, what? Anybody know? Woman, because of your faith. Has what? Made you whole. Yes. Has made you what? Whole. You know why? Because she got back to the realization that only love was real. Mm -hmm. She went and spent all her money. She went to every doctor. She took every treatment. Nothing worked until love came by. Watch this. Oh, yeah. That was it's good. That was good. Don't don't look this up in your Bibles because it ain't there, but I'm oh, guaranteed that this that woman good. had to see the man, Jesus, pass during the three years of his ministry. Yes. He stayed within the same region over and over and over. He didn't go too many places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he had to come to bringing the facets of herself back into the wholeness and realize that only love was real. So now watch this. Did he give credit to the Father? Yeah. No, he didn't. Oh, no, he said he said her her faith. Did he take credit for himself? No. Did oh, they oh. have everything to do with it? Yes. <laughs> they became one. He had to become vulnerable to trust the master for her healing. <laughs> that makes sense. For example, yes, my dog just died. Yes, my husband just left me. Yes, my wife just left me. These are just external form bouncing about in the field of change. But the essence has not left, for I am free to love. I am free to make the energetic transition from one set of circumstances into the present moment. I am free in each moment to abide in fear, not to abide in that great fear that I can't possibly survive because my wallet or purse has been stolen. And what are husbands, mates, careers, cars, and money in the bank, and not the attempt of the little child within you to have and hold onto the wallet or the purse that you, that you think can comfort you? Yet the Christ within you can love. In each moment that you seem to be confronted with the challenge that brings up within your deepest fears of security, your deepest fears of managing the estate, the domain that you call your life, these things come not by accident. In other words, there is no coincidence. There is no, none of that. Right. And they must come without ceasing in a world of unceasing change. 
for all that you look upon and, and say that you love, that you perceive as a temporary form of creation is already dying and dead to you. There can be no peace in the world, but you can be the embodiment of the peace when you look beyond all form and perceive the essence of all things as the longing for love, the longing is to remember. Read the part, brother. When your spouse. Five sixteen. When your spouse leaves you no matter what, what they say, what they say they are leaving you because they long for love. Does this mean that you have failed them? Absolutely not. For that it for that would mean that they are a victim of you. Mm. But you have heard me say to you many times, there is no cause save that which arises within the field of the so sovereignty of each soul. Love is always present and there is no reason for staying or going. There is only reason to what? Awaken to the voice for love and to allow to what? Move. So, in other words, let the voice of God move you or direct you in your actions. Amen. Mm. Go ahead. So in the world, peace cannot be found. For in the world, there's only the deep belief that love is absent and must be sought, pursued, and gotten extracted, extracted from the forms of creation, whether it be career, flower, ocean, desert, leather, meat, or money. To what? The forms of the the forms of the of the world contain no reality. By that I mean that when we look at someone or something and that and the energy of wanting to possess is for a shepherd, yeah, radiant sanity. <laughs> insanity is wholly illusory, which means any attempt to live from that energy can only what? Fail. Everybody get that? Yet, at the very same moment, the world awaits you in perfect transparency. Nothing can obstruct you. In the busiest of your malls, in the most horrendous traffic jam, there is nothing that is preventing you from choosing to remember only your loving thoughts. There is nothing preventing you from choosing to look upon a brother or a sister and see their perfect innocence, to see their unchanging essence, while allowing them complete freedom to journey as they must until they elect to remember the essence within themselves, until they have chosen to learn to be the stillness of God's presence. Peace be still. Stillness is not opposed to activity or movement. Rather, it pervades the body-mind. There is a quality of stillness in the awakened that is very ever attractive. Yet the awakened are ceaselessly involved. Why? because they no longer resist the flow of this dream world, including the body-mind. They have reversed the thought structure of the world within themselves. The body-mind is no longer compelled by fear. Unobstructed, it serves but one purpose, the extension of love. Can someone take that next one for me? For example, yes, my dog just... Oh, no, no. Oh, <laughs> can, can you extend love by Straining the energy of the body. Now, can you extend love by holding on to rigid dots and beliefs about how relationships could, should be? No. no. So now we answer the question Can you ex extend love by restraining your energy? No. No. Can't do it. You can't serve two masters. You're either going to love one or hate the other. Okay. The only way then to remember love, the only way to rest in the certainty of the way of knowing is to come to the realization that what is not love is what? Fear and only fear. In any moment of experience, regardless of what is occurring, where love is not present within you as a known commodity, you are in fear. So when you're, well, self-explanatory, correct? Everybody understand that? Okay. We do not speak here of emotion or the wave of energy that might be passing through the body when you walk around the corner on a hiking trail to behold the very angry mother grizzly bear who will protect her cub by having you for breakfast. Those are just <laughs> emotion <laughs> passing through you, through the body-mind part of the system that you would help you flee or stay. 
Here's the question to which I'll ask earlier. Do not make the mistake of perceiving that as fear. It is just a bio biochemical electrical impulse programmed into the body mind for even the wise and enlightened will pay attention to that. Yet the wise and enlightened will look quickly and possibly say, perhaps this is my time. Go ahead, bear, eat me. Go ahead, crucify me. Or perhaps the very same enlightened one will say, take me from the city. The crowds are too great. We must flee across the lake for they will press upon me and beat me up if they can. It is not time. It is not the place. Bless you. Everybody get that? Yes. Peace then is not passivity. Peace, the very state of love, is a state in which no experience is obstructed within you. Do not make the mistake, as so many do, of thinking that experience has something to do with what is outside of the very body-mind. For remembering nothing is caused by a single event occurring beyond the boundaries of the body-mind. If two human beings come together, they may not know why, but for some reason, their heart is open. They are walking around with a neon sign that says, I just want to love and be loved. This is why people, when y'all are in love and in the flow, that's why people just come up to you and start giving you their problems. Just start sharing things with you. Okay? That is the only, re the only reality. I'm a little tired of putting up a wall of resistance. They walk around the corner and, oh my goodness, the sparks fly. They say, oh, love. This is it. This is the real thing. Oh my God. Oh, how could this be? This must be a gift from God. Nonsense. It <laughs> is a gift from yourself. <laughs> you are the one who chose in the depth of your being to finally become sane enough to allow the context from your or the experience of love sharing to be called to you. And guess what? It is occurring in your lover for the very same reason. Two souls have sent out the call and have come together in a field of space and time within the body mind for a moment in which has each set has said yes to the possibility of remember the purity of love. Love does not condemn and love does not judge. What is not love is fear and nothing else. Therefore, remember always that no act of love should ever be judged. For each act of love is to be cherished. Each moment of love's presence and reality is to be cherished. Each moment in which a soul, two souls, three souls, 10,000 souls, a country of souls, a university of souls, it doesn't matter, makes the choice to drop the defense, to open and gesture as a presence of love that acts to the be cherished. For it is rare in the world. Can somebody read that next one? I got a little dry mouth. Those that would seek to possess a mate, to create an exclusivity, are truly only expressing some subtle level of fear. Love denies not to anyone the perfect freedom that is the sovereignty and right of every soul. For you cannot know love until you have set all beings free. You cannot know your creator until you love as your creator loves. And there is no one who is reading these words that does not long to know love completely to come home again. Oh, I have goosebumps on my, on my body. <laughs> They gave me goosebumps. You reading it also? Amen. Yeah, good stuff. That was deep. Yeah. Amen to that. Questions, comments, concerns. We all good. That was good. That was a good one. Amen to that. And please go back and read over this lesson because this lesson carries a lot of things, especially with us dealing with emotions. Right. This is probably one of the most important lesson that we've taught. So if you can go back over it frequently, whenever the Holy Spirit guides you and Jesus gives you that anointing to go back and read it, go back and just kind of give it a look and, and go back and not only read it, practice it. It's a discipline. Share it. Share it, absolutely. It's good. That's good. Amen. <laughs> yes, yes, Melissa. Uh, Pastor, I just want to uh, share my experience that uh, daily I have been spreading love, right? 
uh, and and strange things. You know, you see people's reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, out of nowhere, wherever you go, wherever I go, you know, people show kindness to me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the other day I was surprised though that uh, I went to Costco. I was telling my kids, hey, uh, strawberries are cheap, so let's get strawberries. Mm -hmm. But there were people there, you know, picking the strawberries, you know, the boxes of strawberries. So this man, I do not know him before, never met him before. He mm -hmm. said, he gave me, he handed to me a box of strawberries <laughs> with a smile, you know. So, oh, okay. I said, oh yeah, that is the result of me giving out love to people around me, you mm -hmm. know? So mm -hmm. if, if we um, uh, practice this, like sharing love, you know, uh, giving out love to the people around us, you know, just determine your radius. Yes. How long your radius you want it to be. Mm -hmm. there, and then you'll be surprised over the time, wherever you go, people is going to love you. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> That is what you call reaping and sowing. And let, letting your light shine. Letting your light shine. God is love and God is light. So when you meditate day and night and you begin to practice praying without ceasing, and then you become the embodiment of what love truly is, then you become a magnet for love. Mm. Amen, somebody. Yeah. They want to be loved. <laughs> A magnet. Yeah. I, I'm a love magnet. Mm, I'm a love all y'all. <laughs> exactly. But the more we practice love, and matter of fact, maybe, matter of fact, how many of y'all would like to do another 30 day unconditional love challenge? We ain't did one in a while. We, we have been doing that every day since then, Pastor. Right, oh, but we're going to do an official one. Oh. Okay. So, July 5th, let me write that down. Ten, one ten. This is important. <laughs> July fifth to August fifth, we're going to practice again unconditional love. <laughs> we're gonna love anybody you think you perceive that is an enemy. You're going to love anything that you have judged. You're going to love yourself like God loves you. Hallelujah. You Amen. Love others like God loves them. You're going to love God's creation like God loves them. We just going to love, matter of fact, when people start talking about that coronavirus, I want you to find a way to show them some love in that. Grab them and hug them. No, they do not want you to hug them. Don't do that. You. That might be a fight. I like it. I like it, man. Give them a word. You know. Yeah, like Sister Rochelle just said, when she said, you say, I like your mask. <laughs> like your eyeballs. <laughs> Got pretty eyes. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna love, matter of fact, we're gonna love every single thing that we might consider resistant. Anything we might consider negative. We just gonna love it. Everybody in agreement with that? Yeah. All right, so let's make it official. I I, I the names. Me, yeah. will do my best, we'll do to, my do best. best. To, practice to practice unconditional love, unconditional love. Morning. morning, morning, noon, noon. noon. And, night. And, and night, night, and in between, and, and in between. between. That's it. All right. Yeah. So, August 5th is our end date. So let the challenge begin. Yes. I love it. <laughs> and really, honestly, it's not even a challenge. I was going to say that. Not a challenge. It's a way of life. It's a way of life. But let's get better at this way of life because life happens. Things are yes, going to happen that's going to cause you to react in an emotion. Yes. And yeah. I, don't, I don't want the emotions to be shut down by different types of teaching. We want to go with God teaching. Yeah. yeah. We want God mind. We uh -huh. want God knowledge, God consciousness. 
So yeah. in order to have that, we embrace everything in love. As a matter of fact, I'm yeah. gonna start right now. Anne, I love you. Eltonia, I love you. Teresa, I love you. Sister Rochelle, I love you. Sonia, I love you. Anson, wherever you at, I love you. Melissa and all the kids, love you. I love me, because I see you. I love Sue. I love Lou. Amen. <laughs> and we love everybody who wanted to be on, who couldn't be on. Amen. All right. Who I love all that? my fellow multimillionaires right <laughs> there. Love all. That's Amen. what I'm talking about. Ching, ching. Amen. Amen. All right. Any volunteers want to pray us out? I pray. All right. All this love going on. Everybody get quiet now. <laughs> we not praying. My cousin says she'll pray. Oh, go for it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you so much. God, we thank you for this joy that we have. Glory, God. Yes. Father, we thank you for this continual coming together. We thank you for this love. Lord, we are just so excited about what you're teaching us and how it's affecting our lives and the change in the yes, evidence. Lord. evidence, the evidence. Lord, I decree and declare more evidence this week for all of us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for this this, this walk that we're in, this unconditional walk. Father, okay. even today, even today, as we go throughout the course of the day, Hallelujah. Lord, we will pick the people to love on purpose and we receive them. Lord, someone's waiting to be loved. And so yes. Uh, yes. Available. And we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful teaching uh, through yes. Dr. Meekins. Lord, bless him. Bless his, his anniversary today, Lord. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His queen in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you for that wonderful prayer. Thank you for the Amen. 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 All the love to you all, and you all have a blessed, blessed, blessed day. Be safe. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.